Welcome to our Bible study beside Henson Creek. Happy Sabbath. We saw the sun going down, down, down over that green hill over there. And that was a sign that we have 24 hours coming of rest. Rest from our work. Time to spend with our Creator. Let's sing a little bit about this day of rest. Number 462. Safely through another week, God has brought us on our way. Let us now a blessing seek, waiting in His courts today. Day of all the week the best, emblem of eternal rest. Day of all the week the best, emblem of eternal rest. While we seek supplies of grace through our dear Redeemer's name, Show thy reconciling face, take away our sin and shame. From our worldly care set free, may we rest this day in thee. From our worldly care set free, may we rest this day in thee. Here we come, thy name to praise. May we feel thy presence near. May thy glory meet our eyes while we in thy courts appear. Here afford us, Lord, a taste of our everlasting feast. Here afford us, Lord, a taste of our everlasting feast. May the gospel's joyful sound conquer sinners, comfort saints. Make the fruits of grace abound, bring relief to all complaints. Thus may all our Sabbaths be, till we rise to reign with Thee. Thus may all our Sabbaths be, till we rise to reign with Thee. He has brought us safely through another week. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this Sabbath. Thank you that we have time to rest, to relax, time to spend with you, time to study, time to read your word, time to spend time in your creation. Father, thank you for giving us such a gift, the gift of time. Please speak to our hearts during this study. Bind Satan and his evil angels that our minds could be focused and we could learn all that you want to teach us. We thank you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. Our memory verse is Psalm chapter 118 and verse 8. 
It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord. Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord. Psalm 118, verse 8. Okay. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 118, verse 8. I'll do it without the first letters. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put conf- put confidence in man. Psalm 118, verse 8. Very good. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 118, verse 8. Excellent. Anybody else want to try? The next verse is only one word different. Really? It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Mm I love memorizing God's Word with you all. I'm glad Daniel read that next verse. It's uh, The next verse says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. So um, maybe somebody would be more apt to trust in someone that was in high authority. Mm-hmm. But this is making it clear that no human being no matter what his high status, should be trusted as much as the Lord. Mm, amen. It's interesting. Wow. So, if you have verse 8 memorized, then you have verse 9 memorized too. Just remember it's the word princes instead of the word man. Okay, we are on page 108 in our curriculum, and let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Numbers, chapter 16, and we're going to be reading verses 18 through 33. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, 
Shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? <clears throat> and the Lord spake unto Moses, <clears throat> saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, <clears throat> Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram. And the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up, with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Wow. On the next morning, the 250 princes with Korah leading them came with their censers. The people which were invited by Korah gathered around. The glory of God appeared unto all present. God told Moses and Aaron to separate themselves from among the people. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces to plead for the children of Israel. Moses now told the children of Israel to separate themselves from the tents of those wicked men. The people obeyed quickly. Before their eyes, the earth parted and the rebels were swallowed up with all their families and all that they had. All of these people died because they did not show respect for God and Moses, God's appointed leader. Ephesians chapter 5, 6 and 7 Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Okay, we have some review questions. Did Korah come the next day? Yes. And who did he bring with him? Incredible. It says... It says in verse 19, Korah gathered all the congregation against them, which would be Moses and Aaron, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm. So it sounds like Korah was busy in convincing everyone that Moses and Aaron were not the rightful leaders. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. What happened to the rebels? Uh, 
The part that amazes me before they were destroyed was verse 21, where he was speaking to Moses and Aaron, and he was speaking to just the two of them, Moses and Aaron, and saying, separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may assume, consume them in a moment. So God was telling Moses and Aaron, I just want to kill them all. And I think he was testing Moses and Aaron because it was only through their intercession that all the people didn't die. Because it says in verse 22, Moses and Aaron fell upon their faces and interceded, O God, the God of spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin? Wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And then the Lord spoke to Moses and said into the congregation, Get you up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So it appears here that it was only through the, the humble intercession of Moses and Aaron that all the rest of the people even had a chance to get away from Korah, Dathan, and Abiram and escape being consumed. Mm. Wow. Wow. Because then when they got away from Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, it says in verse 32 that the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, their houses, and all the men that pertained to Korah and all their goods. Hmm. It's a, a mercy of the Lord. So the earth opened up and swallowed them. So it sounds to me like the Lord didn't tell Moses that the earth was going to open up. So did Moses like prophesy that? Or what do you think? Well, the Lord definitely made it clear ahead of time that there was... He was going to do something, but he didn't. Like it's not clear. Fire. It's not clear. How, you know, the Lord didn't make it clear how he was going to deal with them, or how what punishment was going to come on them. So I think that's interesting. He says, "If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up." with all that appertain to them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And as soon as he got done saying that, it happened. Well, one uh, thought that I have on this story is the larger picture of how the, the Bible is often thought of as fairy tales that are very questionable. From my understanding, this exact location has been located, somebody we've met in years past. Ron Wyatt. Located it with uh, equipment, with detection equipment, and I think I've heard of some art, a few artifacts, that, I mean, well, remnants that have been retrieved from that location where they were swallowed up by the ground. Wow. Mm. Makes me think of uh, the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Mm. And... They had this historic uh, Corvette worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions of dollars, and the ground opened up in that museum, in that showroom, and it fell down in there. And with all the sophisticated equipment that we have today, they were not able to retrieve it and bring it back to its... Uh, Show, wow. show room. Uh, regarding Stephanie's comment and wondering about the prophecy that Moses said about the ground opening up and swallowing them, I'm curious about that too. But my understanding is that when a prophet makes a prophecy, it's because the word of the Lord is in him mm -hmm. and that the Holy Spirit would have Mm -hmm. spoken that to him ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it wouldn't have been Moses' idea. It mm -hmm. would have been the Holy yeah, Spirit speaking to him. That, uh, a person who's inspired by the Holy Spirit will just talk. The Holy Spirit is talking through them and they don't even know what they're saying ahead of time. Mm -hmm. They're just saying it. It can happen that and way. It, it comes through their mouth and when they hear their own mouth talking, they're 
usually shock themselves. <laughs> but it's the Holy Spirit doing the talking mm -hmm. through them. Mm -hmm. That's one way that's, that it can happen. I've, sure. I've heard that happen a mm -hmm. number of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's times where the Lord gave me a message and I it just came right in the moment. And and then later I don't I don't always really remember what I spoke uh, later and it's and it's like it's not coming from it's not something that I studied and came up with and planned ahead of time it just has come right in the moment um, and it just it, it's something that I'm not even really always thinking it through it's just it's just coming out it's just flowing Why were these men destroyed? They were rebellious against authority. Mm -hmm. And so God had appointed Aaron and Moses as leaders, so it was being rebellious against God's authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other thoughts on this point before we come enter into our nature study time? So, some people might say if they didn't believe in Moses or some of the people that were there, they could have said, like, Moses cast a spell on them and made this happen supernaturally or whatever. But Moses was a servant of the Lord, and he spoke what the Lord told him to speak, and it happened the way that Moses said it would. Mm. Yes, because the Lord spoke through him. So, you just have to like look at everything and compare what's the truth and what's not. Yeah, and in this case, Korah... And Dathan and Abiram were very convincing. And they won a lot of people over onto their side. Uh, we can be easily swayed by the people that are around us. We need to ask for God's discernment so that we're not just following a man or we're not swayed by the influence of influential people but that we would be read, led by God and His principles found in His Word. Just like our memory verse says, it's better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in man. Mm. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Mm -hmm. And Korah, Dathan, and Byram, well, Dathan and Byram were princes. Mm -hmm. They were leaders. They were <clears throat> influential. They were in authority. And... Unfortunately, people trusted in them rather, in the, rather than in the leaders that he had appointed. Or even in God himself. Yes. Well, when you think about the larger context there, there was a lot of prayer evidence that God really was at work. Mm -hmm. Think about the ten plagues in Egypt, the Red Sea crossing, mm -hmm. on and on and on, the mm -hmm. Moses striking a rock and water gushed out. I've seen pictures of that where that happened. It's a huge boulder up on a hill that split right down the middle and evidence of water flow down it. Wow. So there was a lot of evidence, a lot of prayer evidence to demonstrate that yes God was at work through Moses mm -hmm. and so to continue to question in the face of that wasn't appropriate right and yet there's a balance there because there are a lot of times and places where we should question human leadership and is it right is it following God does it follow the principles from the Bible mm -hmm. etc Yes.
Annuals are flowers that are grown from seeds. They are planted, they sprout, grow to full size, bloom, produce seed, and die. All of this in one year or less. In colder areas, annual seeds can be planted indoors in late winter or early spring. They can then be transplanted outdoors as soon as the ground is completely thawed. The rebellion was like an annual. It was planted by Korah. It sprouted, grew to full size, bloomed, produced more evil seed, and the earth swallowed them up. All because these princes of Israel did not show respect for God and his appointed leader, Moses. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram had allowed Satan to plant seeds of discontent in their minds. <clears throat> As they complained to one another, it was like cultivating the plant of unholy ambition, wanting to take Moses and Aaron's place. This plant quickly blossomed like the annuals into open rebellion. Young people, children, teenagers, as you work together with your parents, show respect for your father and your mother. For example, when you're asked to do a chore, smile and quickly obey. Learn to be content with your place in life. If an older brother or sister I don't know what they're barking at. If an older brother or sister is allowed to do certain things that you are not, do not complain like Cora, but instead respect your parents' judgment. It's important for children to realize that God has put their parents in a position of authority over them so that disobedience is disobedience to God. And it's important for parents to realize that God has put them in that position um, over their children with authority to rule wisely and that when children show disrespect to them, they are learning to disrespect God. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that's true. Let's observe flowers and learn to identify them. If you're artistically inclined, you can draw pictures of annuals and color them. If it's the right season, plant a bed of annuals. Separate them by a border from the rest of the yard to remind you of how God told the Israelites to separate themselves from the rebels. We are planning to plant some perennial flowers. They're going to be strawberries. Strawberries <laughs> are perennial flowers. We're going to plant some more perennial flowers, um, thornless blackberries. We're enjoying the, the fruits of the annual flowers, uh, the beautiful okra flowers. We're mm. eating lots of good okra. They're, oh, the okra flower is so beautiful. Yes. We uh, planted some watermelon flowers earlier this year, and we're definitely enjoying the fruits of them now. Those men of Israel were determined to resist all evidence that would prove them to be wrong. And they went on and on in their course of disaffection until many were drawn away to unite with them. 
Who were these? Not the weak, not the ignorant, not the unenlightened. In that rebellion there were 250 princes, famous in the congregation, men of renown. They accused Moses of being the cause of their not entering the promised land. They said that God had not dealt with them thus. He had not said that they should not die in the wilderness. They would never believe that he had thus said, but that it was Moses who had said this, not the Lord, and, it was, and that it was all arranged by Moses to never bring them to the land of Canaan. Korah had cherished this, his envy and rebellion until he was self-deceived, and he really thought that the congregation was a very righteous people, and that Moses was a tyrannical leader, continually dwelling upon the necessity of the congregation's being holy, when there was no need of it, for they were holy. The people thought if Korah could lead them and encourage them and dwell upon their righteous acts, instead of reminding them of their failures, they should have a very peaceful, prosperous journey. And he would without doubt lead them, not back and forward in the wilderness, but into the promised land. They said that it was Moses who told them they could not go into the land, and that the Lord had not thus said, Korah, in his exalted self-confidence, gathered all the congregation against Moses and Aaron unto the door of the congregation, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. here, Korah had cherished his envy and rebellion until he was self-deceived, and he really thought that the congregation was a very righteous people. So, if you believe lies and internalize them, then you can start believing things that are not true. So I'm wondering, like, he must have just yielded himself so much to Satan that he let Satan have full control over him mm. to not be able to like use his mind and realize that this is not the truth but he believed that it was mm. self deception And then also the people, it says that they they thought that if Korah could lead them and encourage them and not point out their failures, and they could just follow him into the promised land. So they were thinking, well, it'll be, just be easier if we just follow Korah, and we can just go straight into the promised land. And... I just don't understand how their brains were working, except for that they yielded their mind to the devil. Mm. They, they didn't want to accept the word of the Lord through Moses that they would have to wander in the wilderness and die. And when Korah told the people, no, it wasn't it wasn't the Lord that said we would have to die in the wilderness. That was just Moses. They looked to Korah as someone who would lead them to the promised land. Because they didn't they weren't willing to submit. They were not willing to submit to the consequences that the Lord gave them. So they were looking for a leader that would lead them so they wouldn't have to have any consequences. So 
So it sounds like they were sorry that they received the consequence, but they weren't sorry for the action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because they weren't sorry for the action, they didn't get back right with the Lord. And so they continued in their rebellion. Mm. Yes, like like we mentioned in an earlier lesson, uh, a man robs a bank, he gets caught, he goes to prison. He's sorry that he got caught, but he's not sorry that he used force to steal money and he hurt people and made people afraid. And uh, He's just sorry that he got caught. Um, now, there are people who do commit crimes. This is more rare. But they're genuinely sorry for how they hurt other people. Genuinely sorry that they did the wrong. And they're truly sorry, not just that they got caught, but they're sorry because they made choices that hurt themselves and other people. There's a fundamental difference between being sorry you got caught and being sorry for committing a wrong action. So I think a lot of us kind of run on, I guess, like autopilot is how I would explain it, where we are not fully using our mind. And I think that it has to do with not being connected with the Lord. And so when you're on this autopilot, you're just like accepting everything at face value and you're not questioning things. And like when someone says you're, they're sorry, you just believe them. You don't try to like ask them like, well, are you sorry because you did this or are you sorry because of that? Because, because you got caught. Because when someone wrongs us, and they say they're sorry, in order for us to fully trust them and be able to fully trust them, we need to know that they're sorry for what they did, not just that they're sorry because they got caught. And I just think that we're not taught to think about these things or question anything. Mm -hmm. And so the only way that I can explain that is we're not fully using our mind and it's because we're yielding part of it to Satan and it's not fully given over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Without the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's guidance in our life, we're not going to know. We're not going to know whether we should trust someone or not. Mm -hmm. um, when someone hurts us in the strength that God gives us, we should always forgive. However, it's reasonable if that person has lost our trust. It's reasonable for us in order to be safe to allow that person to earn our trust back. A person who says, I'm sorry that I hurt you, I'm sorry that I did wrong, shouldn't expect that you're automatically going to fully trust them when they're the ones that lost your trust because they betrayed your trust. They should expect that they may not be fully trusted the way they were before. But they can, as they move forward, earn that trust back by consistently doing what they should do. And may God give us discernment to not put trust in people that are untrustworthy, that could hurt us or our families, or our children. So maybe I didn't exactly say that correctly. Um, when we're dealing with our children, we need to teach them the difference between saying, I'm sorry for what they did versus saying, I'm sorry for the consequences. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to like adults... We need to be connected with the Lord and trust His guidance and His mm -hmm. judgment and His mm -hmm. what He reveals to us. Yes. Yes. And to actually use our mind and think about this and not just blindly accept, oh, you're sorry, okay, well, let's move on. Mm -hmm. 
which it's good to forgive people. It's good to accept their apology, but we don't need to be deceived either. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. There's times where people will say they're sorry just because they they want us to continue trusting so they can continue taking advantage of us. Um, we need <clears throat> we need the discernment that we don't have naturally. We need the discernment that only the Holy Spirit can give us with these situations. A lily's word. My delicate lily, blossom of fragrant snow, breathing on me from the garden. How does your beauty grow? Tell me what blessings the kind heavens give. How you find it so sweet to live. One loving smile of the sun charms me out of the mold. One tender tear of the rain makes my full heart unfold. Welcome whatever the kind heavens give, and you shall find it as sweet to live. Any other thoughts before we close? Our Heavenly Father, we thank You for this lesson, this history. A sad story of men who did not want to accept the consequences for their actions. And they were not willing to accept Your Word through Your servant Moses. Give us the grace, the strength that we need not to make their same mistake. Give us a willingness to accept whatever consequences that we need. And we know that you're merciful and you will not put on us more than we can bear. And while they were in the wilderness wandering, their shoes did not wear out. Their clothes did not wear out. You gave them water. You gave them food. You provided for their needs. Yes, there was a punishment of not going into the promised land, but all that they needed, Your hand provided. And we know, Father, that if You choose to punish us, You'll do it with mercy. And so we trust Your hand that You'll do what's best for us. Bless each one of us here and those that will watch later. We ask this in the name of Your Son, Jesus. Yeshua. Amen. You want to try to, can you splice something back in? I was just thinking about how Moses and Aaron interceded for all the congregation that had been believing mm -hmm. Korah and how their lives were spared mm -hmm. because even though Korah was accusing Moses and Aaron of being high and mighty and proud and un unlawful leaders, they were the humble ones that interceded for the lives of all the congregation. And they were type of Christ. And I was just thinking about Hebrews chapter 7, uh, verse 25, because in the book of Hebrews, it talks about Moses being you know, a faithful servant, like a type of Christ. And this this is speaking of Jesus, uh, Hebrews 7.25. Wherefore he, Jesus, is able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing that he ever lives to make intercession for them. And Jesus is our high priest. Aaron was the high priest at that time in this story we read. And so 
it just makes me think about our lives that we are alive today, mm-hmm. even though we have been rebellious mm-hmm. and not always followed God's leadership, mm. that we are alive because of Jesus' mm. intercession for us mm. now. Mm. I'm very grateful for God's mercy. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't deserve to live. I'm only alive because of the intercession that my high priest, Jesus, Yeshua, has made on my behalf. And also, the Lord knows everyone's heart. And so, with the 250 princes, He knew their rebellion and that they were only sorry for the consequences. They weren't sorry for what they had done. And so, that's why they were taken out Mm. and the others were able to live because their rebellion was not as deep or as rebellious they weren't to that level well it it was a uh, it was an opportunity for them to show where their hearts truly were Mm -hmm. because the word from the word from Moses the Lord spoke through Moses and said, separate yourself from these men. So whoever believed in God's Word through Moses put a distance between them and these 250 men. Mm-hmm. And they were spared. Mm-hmm. But if they would stand with them, mm-hmm. then they would be destroyed in their rebellion. So there was, there were those that did believe what Moses said to get away from him and obeyed Moses mm-hmm. and were saved. So it, apparently there were some who were with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram in their rebellion. But when the word from the Lord came and said, separate from these men, they're like, mm, okay, well, we're going to put, put some distance between us. Mm-hmm. And God was merciful, and yet in order for His mercy to be received it took obedience on the heart of the people and the word of the lord comes to his children today separate yourselves from sin separate yourselves from these sinful influences that are making you rebellious and taking your heart away from the lord And so in choosing to be obedient to that word of the Lord, we can step outside of the judgment zone and into the mercy zone by exercising this gift that God has given us, this gift of choice. We have the choice. Will we stay with sin and rebellion? Or will we choose to step away from that and stay within His mercy? Mm 